And we're going live in five, four, three, two, one. This is Ted Hicks from Late Night Parents. Ways to follow the show, latenightparents.com. No errors from you, Mr. B. That's a Tony D special. When, when <laughs> usually when we have errors yeah. and Tony's like, oh, yo, that, hey, that's me. That's me. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> hey, Mr. B, how you doing? I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Pretty good. Uh, belated. Happy Thanksgiving and belated happy birthday to you, bro. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Appreciate that, man. I hope your Thanksgiving was as well as mine. Yeah, it definitely was. It definitely yeah. was. Yeah. Um, I'm just sharing to the Facebook page. There's like four of them. So I got a, once I can just share this really quick. And I'll be back right back with you. Uh, let's see. Let's see if it's going to allow me to do it. Of course, it's not going to allow me to do it. It's going to make me type it out. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to make me type it out. It's like, do some work. Tonight's episode is a, the little bit of paradise. Tony D, what's up? Tony D, what's going on? The little bit of paradise. Boy, I got to tell you, it's been, so, it's been something... And post. Okay. Now we post. And now we should be good to go. And even if we aren't good to go. Let's see. I can never win. You know that? I can never win with this. All right. You know what? I'm done with it. I shared it to one page and we'll we'll figure out the rest. It's it's usually this is my my one beef with StreamYard with Tony D. What's going on? And uh belated happy birthday to Tony D also. Yes, sir. Uh, he was chilling. Uh, I know he's enjoying Georgia. He went to go see family. Um, so, Mr. B, here What's we go. Up? We just burnt through three minutes of this, me being uh, acting like I'm a newbie. But good to have you here. Um, ways to follow Mr. B is Mr. B1986. Yeah, sir. Sure. On the app known as X. Yes. We won't say formerly known as Twitter, but even though it was formerly known as Twitter. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> this will be a lot going on in combat sports. Uh, hey, we do, we usually don't do shout outs, but we definitely want to give a few shout outs to my man, Mike Copenhaven. Yes, sir. Big Mike yes. out there on the West Coast yes, doing sir. it up. I hope you enjoyed the holiday. Well, the holiday just started. But I hope you enjoy Thanksgiving with your family and everything else like that. Shout out to Tony D. Um, Brian. Yeah, the big Brian. Sunday Night Smoke. Fireman Rich. Um, nonsensical Nonsense. Leggy Lady. Yep. Michael Bathurst. The whole Haps crew. Um Word. Carmen with All About the Joy, her whole crew with Rick Costa and friends, um, and many, many more, and many, many more that we'll get to. Anyone that you wanted to shoot, shout out uh, specifically hey, this week? Sure, man. Um, you know that y'all um, tune in to the streams on the weekends. Uh, the homie Jaw, Jaw West, a.k.a. Jason. Um Homie Mr. Incredible, Gary MMA Boxing, 
Um, there's a couple other dudes, man. My homie Devin, he out there, and a couple of the, you know what I mean. My viewing crew, man, aka the squad from Periscope, all them folks, man. But yeah, big shout out to them, and don't forget your crew from the um, OK Player app. Excuse me, OK Live app. OK Live, yes. OK yeah, Live. Yeah, don't forget your crew there. Yeah. You always have yeah. crew of people over there. Yeah, where yeah. I come over to get your commentary. Yeah, yeah. And, um, there was a couple of events this past week where I like to tune in and listen to your commentary yeah. while I'm also viewing um, whatever the pay per view is. Yeah, long time, long time viewer from both Periscope and Haps. And he's watching on there too, my homie Phil McCormick. Shout out to that dude, man. Um, long time when I was just barely on the Periscope thing, barely streaming. I still was trying to figure out how the streaming thing works. He was watching again, and so big props to him, man. I appreciate that dude. That's big. Um, That's big. Yeah. yeah, and the homie well, the cat and a couple other folks there too. Yeah, yeah. I want to shout out my boy Bucko Bruce, who I spoke to um, during the Thanksgiving holiday season. Hey. Also to Danny Thompson. I got to shout out my man, Hezzy McCaleb. All my boys from Barbershop Sports from way, way, way back when I was doing the pod with them back in 2012. Ooh. I was doing up. I was, I was, I was a youngling. Helping them out when they did their weekly pod. And they kind of allowed me to dip my toes in and see what was going on. Um, but those are just a few people that we're shouting out. Um, so we'll get get into it. Yes, sir. Um, I want to share right here. I've been at, I was asking you over and over and over again, Mr. B, and you did not fail because I kept asking you what's happening with PFL. I think it was like every week, whether we were <laughs> on air or off air, I was like, yo, is it official? Because that last Bellator card, it was kind of like, okay, we're done, but wait and see what's next and what's next was the news that came out pfl acquires bellator um, a lot of stuff to come out of it with bellator restarting in 2024 um you know the two different brands the different showcases like the the they're expanding the brands within the franchises between the league season the, the super fights Yep. The Challenger Series, the International Leagues, and of course Bellator with their standalone eight standalone events. Um, we listened to um, Don Davis yes, sir. on MMA fighting. Yep. Um, it was a, a great. It was a great day to be in combat sports. So I wanted to ask you, what's the true impact? Of PFL acquiring Bellator MMA, and and I guess the question I'm looking for an answer for is the impact to PFL, the impact to the fighters, the two different leagues, and what does that mean for UFC and One FC? Well, here's the thing. One F. Well, first of all. PFO acquiring Bellator is a big deal. Um, PFO runs this tournament format. I'm a fan of the tournament format. Um, however, with the tournament format, you know, you have a set number of fighters. When the tournament ends, you don't have nothing really to watch. In between of these tournaments. So, because you have the tournaments, you establish who's in the brackets. They pick who's in the brackets pretty much. And it's pretty much the same guys. They come in there. It's not really uh, 
uh, like fights in between <clears throat> where you can see who's in there. You have your main guys. Then they have like the ta- the challenger series. They try to fit in the challenger series the PFL has, where they get where you get to see fighters from the outside fight their way to get a spot on the in the tournament. We've seen that with Impa Kasanganai, who won recently. He won on the Friday. He won the tournament in spectacular fashion, might I add, um, beating Josh Silvera. Uh and a couple other folks there that managed to just punch their ticket. Um, so you see those regular guys. Now you have the option. You pick up Bellator. Bellator has a roster, a pretty solid roster. Golf Hawk was happening. Um, you see those guys now could come in and plug themselves into the PFL tournament. They could also have the option to fight that Bellator, that regular Bellator scene. Um, so you get that PFL, you get that Bellator talent. Really good Bellator talent, might we add. Bellator is not just slackers, you know what I mean? <laughs> and it's not just some slackers. We've seen what can happen. Established guys can come in and make a big scene. Um, Eddie Alvarez managed to win the light, lightweight title, beat an RDA in the past. Um, we seen Michael Chandler stir things up in that lightweight division as well. Um, everybody wanted to see MVP. MVP managed to, you know, we're, we're trying to see how that works with MVP and the UFC. But there's a lot of really good talent, a lot of really good fighters that Bellator has that people were saying, hmm. You know, if they were in the UFC, they could stir things up. Now, PFL got them. And now PFL is going to allow Bella. They're going to run um, for the next two years. They're going to run PF. I mean, Bellator events under the PFL banner. So that's going to be really good to see what's going to happen. You bolster your roster. You got really good talents. What more does this to say? Um. You get good fights and good matchups. Yes. That's what we're looking for. And you get some distribution going on as well because, P- I mean, Bellator, Scott Coker, managed to work some things out, you know. They had the airing of fights in Russia, fights right. in France, you know, a lot of the European uh, plugins. you know what I mean, for, for Bellator or PFL. They had a European show, but unfortunately, not a lot of the U.S. crowd were able to see that PFL show, right. which was horrible. <laughs> there were some mistakes made, and hopefully acquiring Bellator and having a guy like Scott Coker still be under them, um, still work with them, they could work those things out and get better um, broadcast and distribution. You know what I mean? So... So, yeah, so yeah, I guess I'll go into to dovetail under this question media rights. Who do you see? Do you see Paramount? Because there was a lot, a lot of things discussed on that MMA fighting episode, and it sounds like Paramount is still a minority owner. Yes, yes. okay, so. If I remember me, I think they hold like what I think about 20%. Right. Yeah. So for me, it seems like it's too easy and it makes too much sense. Golf Hawk, how you doing? Um, it makes too much sense for Paramount, who's who everyone is dying for live, live sports, live content. Yep. It makes too much sense because wouldn't they have like the first rights, you know, the first access to it. Cause I mean, before they start speaking anywhere, at least for the U S rights, yeah. I'm not going to, I'm not even going to talk, talk international rights, but like for me, it just seems, and maybe even for international because paramount is paramount. They're, they're, they're everywhere. Correct. Wouldn't it make sense for continuity? You already have 
the announcing team. You already have everything's kind of laid out there. And I'm kind of wondering, um, and you know, the next week or so when this stuff is announced, to have the the broadcast media rights to go to Paramount. Yep. You know, it just it's for me, it just makes too much sense. But could you see another dark horse in there? Because I think PFL is no longer or they're winding down their deal with ESPN, correct? Correct. That's correct. Very correct. Um Paramount will make sense. Does make sense. Definitely makes sense. You've already worked with Paramount. I've you know Paramount Please. picked up Sp- um Spike. Uh it's already there. However, there is another one. Okay. The Zone. Okay. The Zone has aired some of Jake Paul stuff. Jake yes. Paul fights have been aired on both P- on The Zone and ESPN. Bunny head somewhat. Uh, <laughs> but um The Zone have been in the MMA business beforehand. Uh, I got to stop bit. you. I got to stop you. Because I remember this is early on when we first met. May even be before we first met. Bellator used to air on the zone. Correct. And Correct. this is back when it was like $9.99 a month. And I was like, yo, this is great. Yep. And then they got ridiculous with the pricing. That's very correct. <laughs> um, yes, Bellator did. We're on the zone. And it made sense. It made a lot of sense. Right. Um, what happened, though, you had them, and I think you had Combate. Combate managed to get on the zone. Yes. Combate managed to get on the zone as well. But for some reason, the zone was plugged in. I think sometime during the 2020s, yes, 2020 happened. Yes, a lot of that that stuff's kind of separated. But they they clung on to boxing. They had their other sports, soccer, and all that other stuff. But they locked in with um with the boxing. Anthony Joshua. The mm-hmm. signing those big contracts and stuff like that is why it kind of happened. So it kind of shook things. And, you know, Combat ended up going on, uh, was it Univision? Yeah, Univision. Yeah, they went on to Univision. And then Bellator ended up going to Showtime because, you know, they worked with Coker and Coker already was doing Strike Force on Showtime. So I was like, yo, we got a perfect, perfect marriage. Coker got a hold of work in there, you know. So mm-hmm. I was like, yo, we already work with these guys. Let's, let's do it again. And they did it again. But I could see the zone getting the op- taking the option of saying, yo, we could get some business booming again. You okay. know, your guy already works with us, Jake Paul. Let's, let's see what we could do. Let's see what okay. we could do. I can see that. But Paramount would look to make the logical sense of being the spot to be at. Right. Yeah, it would be crazy that you know PFO work elsewhere <laughs> with Bellator and Paramount to share. All that, you know what I it, mean? It, it, it just makes no sense. I mean, yeah. come on. Yeah, I mean, unless you want to share it, unless you want to split, and you can split um streaming rights, you know, streaming media rights between them and the Zone or somewhere else, but. Paramount, if you don't pick this up, I'm going to be very upset. (laughs) It it was as crazy as Comcast, Fox, and Disney all owning Hulu. Yeah. You know, it was as crazy as that. And they're they're splitting up the profits. And I'm just like, okay, this this is silly. But Yeah. um, Yeah. So, and I also remember when Bellator was on CBS Sports Network. Which yes. falls under Paramount. Yes. Yes. Um, they were on the CBS network and things were working, but with CBS Sports, you got sports, you got college sports. Yes. Some of that stuff used to interfere 
Right. When coming to Bellator events, that was the problem. And so <laughs> that was the problem. So some things would get delayed. Mm. The live events would be delayed. That's frustrating. Got so it. that's what it was. That's what it was. Live events, you got to have, psh, we're interfering. So if Bellator does an event that's a little early, that would event that would interact with some of the college game days, certain college game day things. And you know, CBS Sports, they do a lot of sports. So that's what was happening. Sometimes it would interfere with the early proceedings of a Bellator card, or Bellator would interfere in that proceedings of that. So you would watch something, and it says, soon Bellator will be coming on. Hey, like Jesus Christ, <laughs> you know, right? Yeah, hey, um, tell me a little bit about the PFL International Leagues because the, there was there was talk about PFL Africa, which is, yeah, you know, gonna yeah. be run by you know who, the king, yes, sir, Francis Nganu, former UFC heavyweight champ. The guy who never got beat for his title. Let's just add that. He never got beat for his title. The number one guy for the UFC. So take that, UFC. You know, um, as far as that's concerned, the uh, international leagues, we have PFL Europe. Now, PFL Europe, if I remember correctly, had about two or three events so far. Mm -hmm. They have some really good talents that have been um, – Lurking in there was on Diana. Is it Diana Dicheva? Um, her mom was a big time kickboxer. She's whooping people. Young girl. Um, she's in like what her mid twenties or so like that. Okay. Early to mid twenties. Really solid. Um, talent. Uh, then you got the big guy. The big guy made his debut. Spectacular fashion, and no, not Francis Ngannou, <laughs> glory welterweight champion Cedric Dumbe. Got it. Making his PFL debut, not his MMA debut. He's been pretty good, undefeated in the MMA. But um, was it a two-time, two-time welterweight champ? Um, yeah, two-time welterweight champ for Glory Kickboxing tournament winner. Hell of a talent. Hell of a talent. His debut was not broadcasted because PFL made the horrible decision of not having it air for North America. So Sadie, if, you are you the, doing? if you had the hookup, if you had the link hookup, hey, hey, Sadie, <laughs> if you had that link, you was able to watch it. But if you didn't have that link, boy, these goofballs really messed up. But that car was pretty good. But, yeah, they're looking for Africa. Hopefully they work out something in Russia because they have Russian talents in the mm -hmm. PFL. Australia? Um, hopefully Australia. You look for Australia right. talent because, you know, um, you look to, bro to branch out there. They're trying to get into Australia. They're going to have to get into Russia because Russia is a big spot for that, um, for MMA. Um they like to branch out to other places, man. I know the UFC was looking for an Indian market. There is MMA in India. You could get that going for sure. Um, and the Latin, you know, Latin America. But hopefully they could figure those things out because there's a lot of good talent growing. I was ranting and raving during this year about the Peruvian talent. We had some Peruvian fighters, but Peru has managed to get itself on the map this year. There have been a lot of Peruvian fighters that have popped up here and there. And we've seen uh, this man, Jesus Pinedo, win this tournament. A talent from Peru who popped up out of nowhere, lost his debut fight in the, turn in, um, the uh, preliminaries of the PFL. Then knocks out the number one guy who won the tournament last season, Brendan Lofnane. Talk about a Cinderella story for Brendan Lofnane. Was fighting in the UFC on the Contender Series. Won, but Dana didn't sign him. 
he says, cool, I'll try my luck in the PFL, wins the 2022 season, <laughs> and does it in amazing fashion, beating some of the top guys, then shows up this season, was looking good, gets knocked out. <laughs> gets knocked out by this Peruvian dude, young cat. Gets eliminated from the tournament. So, so here, here's my question well, of of the international leagues: Are the international leagues kind of considered like the minor leagues in PFL, like America or US, considered like the majors? Like, do you work through PFL and you get through the ranks of PFL Europe? Do you eventually migrate over? To the U.S. or do I mean, or do they operate on the same level um, based on the geographical location? Good question. Um, as far as what's happening with the internationals, um, just like how the UFC did their thing, Bellator did their thing. You look for the the regional talent. You mm -hmm. establish. Your market. You find the talent there. Big name talent, the regional talent, who's big in that in that area. You have them work their way. They get their fights. They fight those guys. They look good there. We'll bring them and have them do their thing here in North America eventually. But for right now, the fans like those guys. They'll fight at that area. And eventually, if they work big enough, big enough, We'll bring them and have them do some fights here in North America. If they work in North America, they become that big name in North America. Yo, we got a chance at putting a title on this person. If they look real, real good, they're picking up wins. We got an opportunity to make them a champ. If that happens, hey, we can have this person fight in this area. You know what I mean? Their hometown. Or if not in their hometown, you know, for you know the uh, the, and I I say this with the Russians because we haven't quite seen a Russian fighter really go back and fight in Russia other than Fedor maybe. Um, it's a rarity to see some of that happen. We have Volkanovski fighting Australia. You know, defend his title in Australia. But I mainly say that as far as Russia goes, the Russian fighters, not many Russian fighters got the opportunity to say, hey, I defended my title in Russia. Mm -hmm. but we see that with Australian fighters. We see that with the Latin American fighters, um, which would be a good thing. But that's how it really goes. You find your market. You put those guys out there regionally to fight. Hopefully they do something big there. You have them fight. So it's like, hey, we're the guys. We have a guy that you guys enjoy. That's from your hometown. Got it. Put them in there like that. Yeah. So <clears throat> let's talk about the potential super fights where Ooh. we know – and Ganu is going to be scheduled for, I don't know, it could be quarter three, quarter four. We don't know where Jake Paul is going to fall in. Are, are we talking about only seeing these guys once or twice a year? If we're lucky, two to three times a year, if we're lucky. Okay. If we're lucky, too. As far as Francis goes, Francis just had that fight with Tyson Fury. So things could be a little different. That happened. That's going to change some things. Um, As far as him fighting in general, a lot of, a lot of people want to see him fight in MMA. Right. But that boxing opportunity changes things. It's big money. Big money. You don't got to put your body through the wear and tear of MMA. Mm-mm. You just picked yourself up eight figures, buddy. You're good money. <laughs> you know what yep. I mean? Um, if he fights in MMA, he's going to fight those super fights. 
A lot of people want to see him find a tournament. We're going to have to sit, wait, and see if he wants to be in the tournament for 2024. And if that's the case. Wouldn't that be a lot of wear and tear on his body to be in, 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 in the in the, the tournament? tournament? Yeah. True. But then we're talking about Francis Ngannou. Ganu. The man who can end the fight in less than 30 <laughs> seconds. Nightmarish power. Nightmarish ability. And it seems that he hasn't quite missed a step according to the, how we've seen him in boxing. He's moving fast. He's developing his striking on a technical level, which is very insane considering how powerful his striking is. We'll see if he gonna if he does it. The tournament format, you know, is about three, four fights. If he makes it through to the finals, that'll be three or four fights. Three to four fights. Would, um, would, and what would be the period, Joe? What would be the period for those three or four fights? Um, according to how they start, how they start the tournament format, we'll probably see fights happen. Was it April? I think it's April. Right. April through. It's like April through. Then we have that big period in like uh, between October and November. So it was like a wait, that big pause period. And then they mm-hmm. come back in like. Like this year, I was kind of surprised they did November. You know what I mean? The tournament's over in November. Usually they do they do December, right? They went till December, but they did November. So, um, that was kind of surprising. But then again, you picked up Bellator. They got to work things out. I get all it. the business behind the scenes. Yes. I get it. So there's a lot of time. You're gonna have those guys train now. Those fighters are training. Um. They, they did the card. Now those guys get to relax. We see what happens come the first quarter of 2024. Those super fights, boy, oh, boy. And let's not even just talk about the big guys for the PFL. Champion versus champion, man. Champion versus champion. What's up with that? That is going to be magical. Seven. Yes. There's a big problem, though, and it's been talked about. Yep. You have two divisions that have no champion in the PFL. Right. Bellator has those two champions. Yep. And they are a hot commodity (laughs) in one undefeated Johnny Eblen and the monster that lurks in the Bantamweight division in Patchy Mix. Patchy Mix's girlfriend is in the UFC. Mm. Boy, oh boy, if you don't got that guy active, hey, 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 Mike Patton. Mike, what's going on? Sir, what's happening? Yes, it was. <laughs> Man, um, yeah, you got Patchy out there. Oh, dope, dope. Said he covered the Titans game. Oh, okay. That was the game. Nice. Um, yeah. You got if if they don't work things out to where you can get Patchy active, we don't know. Here's the problem: you have those two guys, they could work on the Bellator side of things. Who's big enough, really? For those guys to fight. Eblin's right. pretty much cleaned out the top guys in Bellator's middleweight division. What are you going to have them do? As far as Patchy goes, Patchy cleaned the chin of Rafian Stotts. You got a good rematch to go on. He easily beat Sergio Pettis. Magomed, Magomedov, he finished. Who are you going to have him fight? We gonna have them fight. You gonna pick up randoms? <laughs> hey, let's fight some randoms. No, you can't do that. <laughs> so, you know, we got to see how that's gonna work out. We got to see how that's gonna work out. You gonna have a Bellator tournament to figure that one out? You know what I mean? 
you got problems. You got to make things happen. But the rest of those guys, really good talents there. You have the Walter May champions that's going on. Um, who is it? Okay, we have featherweight champion, Patricio Pitbull. Pitbull will be fighting now Jesus Pinedo. Good fight. Problem is, Pitbull's taking two bad losses the end right. of this year. Sergio Pettis embarrassed him in his beer in his uh in his bantamweight attempt. Um, and then he went to Japan. He got knocked out. Bad man, bad loss. We got to see how he bounces back. And he's not gonna have no clear cha- clear fight. He's going straight into that champion versus champion fight. Right. That's gonna right. be crazy. Um, lightweight. We don't know if OAM is planning to retire or not, but he will be fighting the lightweight champion, Usman Magomedov. Now, Usman Magomedov got suspended for PED usage, which is horrible because Usman's really good, really talented. Six months suspension, though. That's kind of a bummer. And that fight ends up being a no contest. So, he fought Brett Primus. That could be a rematch. And if Brett ends up winning, boy, oh, boy. So we got a question mark there. Um, we mentioned welterweight Jason Jackson, who got that amazing win against the undefeated Yaroslav Amosov. He's going to be fighting now Magomed Magomed Karamov, who's a beast. you seen that. He won the tournament after a long hiatus. He couldn't even get to America to compete um, last season, the season before. That was crazy. Um, and it's been a long time, man. He got he took some losses. He had the visa ban, some craziness. Um, no middleweights, light heavyweight. We've seen um, – who was it that won the light heavyweight tournament? Oh, my God. How am I forgetting? Oh, yeah, Impa Kasanganai. Impa, who who lost in the UFC, highlight real knockout loss to Jakeem Buckley, that spinning kick, mm-hmm. bulks up to a light heavyweight, looks small at light heavyweight, but embarrasses these dudes at light heavyweight. <laughs> Comes out of nowhere and beats the son of Honan, um, Honan Fahea, who competed in the UFC in the early years, fought in UFC Japan because it was just like a blah, 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 blah. But Josh Silvera, this was his second time, second run, comes to the finals, gets handled. Handled. What's up, Jay? There you are, bro. Jay West. Oh, if you want to come on? But well, this is gonna be quick, but you could come on with me. We'll get on um after this. But yeah, man. Um, yeah, he's gonna be fighting now. Um, Vadim Nemkov. Uh, the protege of one Fedor Emelianenko, a.k.a. the greatest heavyweight in mixed martial arts that ever exists. Um, that's going to be a good matchup. Hell of a matchup. And if Impa could get that win, whoo, that builds his stock up crazy. And then you got the heavyweights. Um, Brian Bader, long time. Mm-hmm. Right heavyweight guy who fights at heavyweight. But he playing games as far as defending his title. We'll be now finding that big Brazilian, Henan Fajaya. Um, A lot of good matchups. And then I don't even want to get into that women's featherweight now. Larissa Pacheco now winning two divisions, right. fighting Chris Cyborg. Golly. Golly. That's going to be something. Whoo. I look forward to it, though. Yeah, magic. It makes you happy because now you're getting like, we want to see this. <laughs> we want to see this. It it, it was kind of like remember like maybe five six years ago when AEW first came on the scene. Yeah, and everyone was happy because it's competition. Yeah, it's just not the 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 one bully and all the you know the 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 peons that are that are running around the smaller yep. promotions. Yep. This is this is really good. Yeah. Um and then, yeah, and that is like is that Bellator has established champions. Yes. That's what makes it really good because you have established champions who've been in this promotion and fighting guys, fighting talents. 
really challenging the PFL's talents. Now you got to see if the PFL really is about, you know, if they really are that team. You know what I mean? Those guys are really those guys. You know, the one thing from the Ariel Hawani interview with uh, Don Davis was <clears throat> when he talked about, he said the fans want to see Nganu against Johnny Bones Jones. He was like, we can make this happen. Yes. And that is frightening. That, that is, is frightening. Frightening. They have pockets. Yes. This is what you need to understand, people. They yep. have pockets. Yep. They have people who are willing to put money, invest in the PFL. And they're like, okay. they're open yeah. to, hey, your champ against our champ, and we're going to make a whole lot of money. And yeah. And John's looking at it like, I could really make that money. I make good money here in the UFC. Right, right. I'm going to be on my way to retirement. Yep. There you go. He hasn't really been undefeated, but he's getting older. Yep. And I, I'm afraid to say this, folks. That man tore his pec. Yeah. That's an injury you don't want to risk again. Nope. And it can happen again. That's a problem. <laughs> that is a problem. That's a problem. So he's got to fight younger heavyweight talent because they're pushing younger heavyweight talent in the UFC. Do you want to go through that? His body was a, he was a light heavyweight. He's taking he's doing heavyweight. It took him three years to finally say, "Yo, I'm gonna fight a heavyweight." Right. To get your body back in the shape, you're gonna go through these stuff again. Finding these younger heavyweights, and the heavyweight, the younger guys are evolving. They're looking better. Yeah. So what are you gonna do? I don't know, but it's gonna be a good time <laughs> in the PFO, and I, I guess we're looking for if not this week, the next week, for the next, I guess, next rounds of of huge announcements. Yep. Coming out of that camp. Yeah. Which should talk media and which should start to lay down the, I think, the March time frame for the first Bellator event. Because I think they said eight standalone events through yes. the year. Yep. And then March for PF, PFL. So it's a great time for this company. I uh, want to see what they do. Like I said, hey, they can hire us because we can put together your media deal really quick. For exactly. U.S. and international. Yeah. Um, yeah. Want to segue quickly into what are the possible destinations for Joe Rogan's experience to be licensed in 2024? Mm. Joe Rogan. The JRE. Man, oh man. That man has that man got power. If Rogan's coming back, if Rogan going somewhere, they gotta do better than what Spotify did. Yes. That's it. Either Spotify gonna hit him with another another big deal, another extension, or somebody's gonna have to come and move. We gotta get the truck load. <laughs> I think it's more than a truck. I think it's more than a truck because now he's because it's different. Bill Simmons got that huge bag, yes. but he yes. basically sold his company. It wasn't just licensing. That was the craziest part about it. Yeah, right. He yeah. sold his company. Yeah, and he's talked um, openly about it too. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So it's like, man. If you're if you're getting Rogan, YouTube is scared. YouTube is scared. They would love to give Joe Rogan the money, and they could give Joe Rogan the money easy. I, I I'm gonna go as far. I'm, I'm gonna jump in here. I'm gonna go as far as 
if this wasn't coming up to be an election year, I think it would be a totally different approach from YouTube. Yeah. With it being an election year, because officially you blink your eyes, we're in 2024. Um, That's where they start getting scared. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's. That's very true. And I didn't even think about that. Yeah. And you see how, you see how middle the, how middle he is, but they call him right wing, but he, he, he just plays it down the middle and things just get brought up. (laughs) (laughs) Folks don't want to take those risks. Yeah. I hear you. I hear you. You know, it's, it's. A lot of things have been unraveled on the Joe Rogan experience. <laughs> the Joe Rogan experience is truly an experience. <laughs> you learned some things, man. Even when it came to all the things, all the things. All the stuff that we went through. Yeah. And he and was clowned, like. Yeah. And they clowned him on some of the, his experience, <laughs> his, his, his point of views. And then. Look what happened. Yeah. Man look like Nostradamus. Out here. <laughs> it's Who did crazy. he go after? He invited Sanjay Gupta. Yes, sir. And was ready and he was ready to go in for the kill. He, he got, yeah, he got Gupta. Gupta yo. had no answer. <laughs> Gupta really had to go and be like, yo, my fault. I didn't, you know. He uh, was like, your company said and he's just like yeah that's my company i don't know why they would say that i don't know i mean because i know um offline we've talked and we say i mean i know you guys um have mentioned rumble i don't think rumble is big enough or but maybe they are i don't know rumble got rumble you gotta see you see all those got all those folks that have been on, on rumble is rumble is Rumble ready to cut a two hundred million dollar check? That depends. That depends. That's what I think it comes down to. Bring your library. Here's a two hundred million dollar check for the next I don't know three four years, and have at it. Here's the thing, too. You bring JRE to Rumble. You got to think about how many people will be willing to invest in the JRE at that point. Mm-hmm. And they could probably put the money up just to get Rogan to come in there. Not even just Rumble itself. Right. It's 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 a, it's a very... You got to think about it. It's a very tricky situation there where you you looking at all those folks and, and, and on Rumble who who put who put content on Rumble the higher up folks mm-hmm. they some of those people enjoy Joe Rogan they Rogan knows them right they'll be willing to say hey Rogan I'll cut a piece I'll cut a piece of that for you to come in I'll cut a little piece of a little, a little share I'll take a little bit of that I'll just to see my money come back come on Rogan let's go it's scary, but it can happen. But like you say, though, if that doesn't happen, is Rumble really going to be willing to throw that money in the air for a guy like that? Because, I mean, he's going to bring a whole lot of attention and a yeah. whole lot of eyeballs. Yeah. You see a lot of people who come on, a lot of those um streamers and stuff like that, those folks mm-hmm. who've left YouTube and mm-hmm. left the Twitch to get on there. You know, they've done okay. But Joe Rogan's a whole different beast compared to those folks. <laughs> you know, does does he go to... I think he would probably break Twitch. Yeah. I don't think... No, Tw- I don't think Twitch will have him. I don't think Twitch will have him. He's too controversial. He's... Yeah, it's too controversial for Twitch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Twitch don't want to take those risks. I don't think Twitch want to take those risks. No. You know, would you? I'm, I'm thinking about deep pockets. Yeah, you know, the deep pockets. Do you do you bring them to Netflix? 
You give them a televised network. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, do you bring him on TV? Do you do that? Do you bring Joe Rogan on TV? Prime time spot. Because if I go to files, my files TV, and I type in channel 838, it's Netflix. Bro. Man, oh, man. Do you, you do that? Pockets. Do you do and that? You drop, and he's dropping three live pods a week? You tell me. Netflix could gain back a lot of what they lost if they do that. Yeah. They really can. That would be a win-win on both sides. It really would. Mm -hmm. It really would. Because what Netflix has managed to show is loyalty. Yeah. They've managed to show loyalty in mm -hmm. the midst of a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't see him... Apple's too left leaning. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah, we love the paramounts of the world, but they're right down the middle and they're going to be like, no way. We don't want that. And we're the network for, you know, 50 and plus, 50 plus. Yeah. Yep. Um, Disney's not touching them. No. Nope. HBO's moved on from those things. HBO's oh. moved on. Yeah. Though I think that could be a, if he went to Max, oh, yeah, because you got to, like I said, you got to think of who has the pockets, yeah, to write that big check, number one, and say, Hey, here's the landing page, you're going to be available on the landing page. But, like you said, Ted, Netflix would be it, Netflix, global. Global company no, what makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Be mad it makes a lot of sense. Really, I don't know. It really would. We'll table that for another time. Third question is last night. <laughs> no. Trips and Nick Khan pulled it off. Are they hedging their bets with getting in the CM Punk business? What is your take on that? I just know this is not going to end well. This is crazy. First of all, we got to talk about it. They pulled this off without even telling the higher-ups at TKO that this was happening. It's crazy. About 10 days ago, they talked to CM Punk. They talked to CM Punk. Yes. Triple H got to talk to him. Just in the morning before this happened. <laughs> <laughs> Nick God talked to Punk about the deal. Triple H talked to him during the morning of the event. Nobody Crazy. knew but Trips and Khan. Nobody. Not even the roster knew that this was happening. Not even the talent. I heard up until they cleared all the talent out. But I'll, I'll let you ride with the story. But the, yeah, that's what really happened. Yeah, they let the, 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 the clear out. Punk came in. They really literally snuck Punk in. So when that music came on, that's when they knew he was there. Yeah. Rollins is pissed, but what they're talking about is that Rollins is trying to work an angle, which I knew yeah. they were trying to work an angle since they did the, the Twitter spat. Yes. Um. Yeah. They went crazy back and forth. There are some people who feel upset about it. 
There's some people who are happy about it. Mm -hmm. But to get this man <laughs> after nine years. Nine years. They fired him on his wedding day. He walks back into a W W walks back into WWE during the legit ending of a pay-per-view. Like there was no need for that to even happen. You rolled yes. the copyright skew bar, yes. all that stuff. That was it. He pops yeah. up out of nowhere. Brother, that is insane. But that also yes. shows that they understand business. Yes. People could grow up. Yep. People can grow and understand the situation. Punk had an opportunity and went elsewhere, got himself back to see how the response would be. Mm -hmm. And as I mentioned it on Twitter, on X, I can't say Twitter, X, he went elsewhere and realized that as much as you want want things to be different, it might not be all that is cracked up to be. Yeah. And what he's seen and what he talked about is facts. WWE is established. Yeah. Those folks pride themselves in professionalism. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, understand it's a business. And where he was at, they haven't figured that out yet. Nope. So he went back. And we got to wait and see what's going to happen. If he shows up on Raw on Monday, it's going to be crazy. And yeah. moving forward, it's going to be insanity. Yeah. 2024 is going to be an interesting year for wrestling. Once again, wrestling has been flipped on its head. True. Um, this is stuff we only expected. If you listen to the Nick Khan traveling podcast road show he went on so many different shows and was like here's what tko is doing and we're going to provide you you know the fans with like mega events they were talking about mega events yep. for 2024 yep where it's an entire weekend where it's ufc wwe and that same weekend at that same venue in that same area it could be global. It could be domestic. Yeah. Yep. I just know two things I know. This won't end well. And Tony Khan has got to be sick to his stomach. Oh, he's 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 definitely gonna be sick to his stomach. He's definitely sick to his stomach. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you gotta I'm gonna tell you this. You think this ain't gonna end this ain't gonna end well, but it's not gonna end well for who you think is not gonna end well for. Right. The WWE understand what they're gonna do. <laughs> yeah, WWE understands what they're gonna do. This won't end well for AEW and that fan base. Mm -hmm. It's gonna hurt the fan base crazy. If they're going to give, see, if CM Punk's coming back, CM Punk is going to get his creative control. Yep. CM Punk is going to be able to say certain things, but CM Punk is going to get his peace. And that's what it is. He's not a amongst a bunch of, we don't know what we're doing. Right. We're established guys. We get it. That's what's going to happen. He said some things. He's going to mend those fences. Yep. That's going to be it. The AW folks, they're going to look and say, oh, my God. <laughs> Last question for you. Would you night one versus night two? Cody and Reigns, Seth and Punk. Who's night one? Who's night two for you? 
of WrestleMania? You gotta get you gotta get Punk and Seth on night one. Okay. Reigns and Cody night two. Got it. There's a lot more weight riding on Cody and Reigns. Right. That's what it is. There's a lot of weight. And 39 really left people like, we really did that? I'm shocked. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it was. But, yeah, with Punk return, Punk versus Seth would be insane. Closing it out. It has to close out. <clears throat> has yeah. to close out night one. Yeah. You got to really think about it. They talk the trash. Seth really career has been innovated by a guy like Paul. Yes. Yes. So it was like, yo, it's like media idol almost. You know what I mean? And yeah, a lot of things have been said. A lot of things have been said between those two. And you know, punk, punk don't sugarcoat anything. That's the big difference. So I would like to see that happen. We got to let that close night one. If yeah. you hold it at night two, ooh, Whoa. you got to let them go off the hinges. That's why. <laughs> I, I mean, I just, he has to get his WrestleMania moment. Mm -hmm. He has to. Yeah. He talked about this behind the scenes. Yep. Punk, ha he, Punk never had his WrestleMania moment. Yeah. Yeah. It has to happen. And you see, Matt Riddle got upset. Matt Riddle put out a uh, uh, he 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 um threw out a uh, uh post out there mm -hmm. talking about you brought this guy in and you say I'm a bag of problems. <laughs> and I said, poor Matt, you're so clueless. <laughs> clueless. I said, you're so clueless. You there's a big difference between him and you, Matt. Yes. People like you, Matt, but understand business and the cash behind CM Punk. So you got Tony Khan saying, I got Will Ospreay. And you and Will Ospreay is a big pickup. He Don't is a big wrong. pickup. Big pickup. But you got WWE saying, we got CM Punk. Yes, after you guys failed with them. You guys couldn't manage up. You guys couldn't say, yo, let's put on our big boy britches. And I, I, I all along, Joe, Tony Khan's a fanboy. Period. Not a businessman. He's a fanboy. Fan That's all it is. It's a guy who got money and say he could buy what he wants. Right. I think I'll buy that. Yeah. Okay. And hey, we'll, we'll yeah. do an announcement on our Wednesday show. And you're just like. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to do an announcement. My announcements don't carry as much weight as we had as they once did. No. You know what I mean? You had this guy. And you messed it up because you want to be a fanboy. You want to be a fanboy. A boss. And not a boss. Lack the professionalism. And everybody you see talk about, he's so professional. He's so professional. Yeah. Nah, man. We could see it. We could see it now. We get it. Yep. Some of, and, you know, I was on the, you know, we talked the wrestling aspects. And we used to say it. We used to say it, yo. Tony Khan got to put his foot down. Yeah. You got guys who have been at the big spot. They get it. You're trying to say, hey, you want to be noticed. And instead of putting your foot down when it needs to be. And you let that guy walk out of your company. Wow. And half of the guys didn't feel that that was the move to make. Mm -mm. That's the thing. That's the thing. And you have the big names. You have the people that say, oh, you know, he was toxic. He was this and that. But it's only behind 
those EVP guys who said that. It's only those EVPs. You heard Jericho say it. We're going to take a hit, or we're going to try to move on. Right. Jericho understood the money that was there. Mm -hmm. You will hear Joe talk about it some more. Joe understands that. Sting understands that. They understand they lost something. Yep. They lost something. Things happen, though. That's the boss. But they understand they lost something. It's going to be hard to recoup back. Yeah. And imagine seeing that guy walk back at the place where he said he would never return to. Woo. The I guy who had a beef. Hold on. My mom fault. Cutting you off. But the guy who he said he had a beef with, you talk, he talked to him at the Talk. day of and yep. said, yo, okay. if we could work things, we could work things out. He's mentioned it before. Yeah. If we could work things out, we'd be glad to bring him back. Yeah. The picture. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> so you can't live this down no more. They're going to work. Just, it just feels like they pulled a fast one on Tony Khan. Yeah. 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 That's what it just feels like. And look at them show up, stand in Chicago. Yep. Those people go crazy. Yep. They didn't even say, yo, let's wait till the Royal Rumble to do this. Let's do this right now. It was we're here in Chicago. Oh, Punk, Randy Orton showed up. Punk ain't going to come out. We hit y'all with a double. Yo. Two All people. night long, they were they was chanting CM Punk. Yep. All night long. They were chanting CM Punk. Then it looked like Randy wasn't going to show up, so CM right. Punk definitely going to be there. Yeah. Then Randy came out, so it was like, oh, we're not getting Punk. Here's the show about to end. People lost their minds. People who were doing live streams, um, yes. watch alongs, losing their mind. How amazing stuff by WWE! Yeah, that merch sales are gonna be crazy. And they're looking to continue to pick up talent. Yeah. The talent I am, makes shock sense. Awe. I am in shock and awe. You just, you just, you just dimmed the light on Will Ospreay signing the AEW. Yes. You just really did that. And it's Will Ospreay. Ospreay. The young guy who was carrying New Japan. <laughs> um, <laughs> you, think, you, you think, um, last question, you think Tony Khan buys New Japan? Because there was some talk about it. He can. They have the money. You know, he has his dad's money to play with. <laughs> But then what do you do with it? You can't stop AEW any the problem. further. That's the problem. Things are not working the way you thought they were. Mm -mm. You're putting product out there, but it's not getting the views. It's not getting the watches. Dude, you put collision on. No, you had, what was it? Yeah, you had Collision on on the same day you had SmackDown, was it? Yeah. All-time low. All-time 220,000. Yep, all-time low. Then you had the audacity to try to have Rampage and Collision play head-to-head -head with Survivor Series? Crazy. What are you doing? What about the night? I think it was the baseball playoffs. They had. What did they have? I don't know if they had. It wasn't collision. 
it was either Rampage or Dynamite against NXT. Yes. And Trips Dynamite. sent everyone down there. Yeah. And even on a night of sports, you had NXT beat you guys at Dynamite. You had NXT beat you guys. And, and they, they sent that- everyone. Guest star John Cena, Cody Rhodes, Undertaker showed Undertaker, up. Becky Lynch. Becky Lynch, yeah. And then you went on a tirade like a little kid. Oh, you had to break those guys. Bro, they, they talents by WWE. Right. They're the loyalty guy. <laughs> yep. Come on, man. Undertaker, you call Undertaker. Come on, man. You know what you was getting yourself into. These guys have been doing it for 50 plus <laughs> years. Come on, man. They know what they're doing. They get it. If they want to pull the big guns, they'll pull the big guns. And they can pull the big guns at any time. Anytime. Triple H is trying to play nice with you guys. And yeah, I won't just leave it alone. You won't leave it alone. He could pull Dwayne Johnson at any time. Yep. And that's a showstopper right there. Yeah. Austin, you doing something? Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. Trish, that is supposed to come back. You got all these people come back. We need you to just do a segment. Come on, man. You can't. Here's 100K. We need you to do a a 10-minute segment. You can't. And it's just weird, man. And and I I wonder what's going to happen now with Impact Wrestling. Now they're going back to the TNA format. Right, right. And they got some investors coming through. I want to see what they're going to do as far as talent goes. Okay. But they put on a decent product too, but they just need that flag bearer character, that one flag yes. bearer person. That's what they need. The one person, yes. That what just elevate them. The one or so people, you know what I mean? You know, just the one, the one that just says, Yo, I'm gonna put this this promotion on my back and let's go. And they had it, they had it. But you know where they messed up? When AEW came and they said, yo, we're going to give our title to Kenny Omega. Yes. Y'all messed up. You messed up. You messed up. And, and, and that was after the fact that you guys gave your world title to a lady. <laughs> mm-hmm. You let Tessa Blanchard win the world title. Come on. You can't take more hits like that, man. mm you can't take more hits than that. You can't do that. She held y'all hostage. She pulled the Jeff Jarrett. Come on, yeah. you can't do that. <laughs> Talk about yeah. let me get 150,000. I'll bring the title back. <laughs> She's sitting in Mexico. Come on, man. Dude, I want to thank you for coming through. Hey, no problem. I want to thank you for coming through. It's a combat sports centric episode. Um, let's see who's in the comments as we shut this down. Tony Tone said it's CM Punk against Cody Rhodes. I like to see that too. I like to see that too. Uh. I'd like to see a champ for champ. Mm. Would be nice, you know. Yeah, man. Um. But yeah, those those are the three topics we discussed. PFL, we discussed, of course, the ever lovable Mr. Joe Rogan. Yep. And then we we talked a little um, WWE Survivor Series, War Games, CM Punk, the business of of wrestling. It'll more than likely happen, Tony. It'll more than likely happen. Yeah. There's a lot of stirring too, man. Because there's, there's, there's like a, a rumor backstory behind that where it felt like because CM Punk was coming in, that's why Cody left. Mm-hmm. There's a little bit of backstory behind that. So Cody see. went to 
Uh, you just think about it. You listen to any of those wrestlers. They said Vince McMahon went personally to go get Cody. Yeah. Yeah. Personally went to go get him. He knew. He knew. That's respect. A lot of that people will say that's due to his father and this and all this. And maybe no. it is. Maybe yeah. it is. But, so what? But more than that, Cody got it. That's what mm-hmm. it was. Cody got it. When mm-hmm. Cody left, Cody rebuilt his whole brand. Yes. His not just the, the Rhodes name, but his brand. Yeah. This dude wrestled everywhere he needed to wrestle at. Yep. Man wrote a list and people that he wanted to wrestle and went out and did it. Yep. Everywhere he could wrestle. Mexico, UK, California. He was out there. PWG, <laughs> Battle of Los Angeles. He showed up. <laughs> yep. Come on, man. You could have asked for it. Went to Japan, Bullet Club, Ring of Honor. Oh, yep. come on, man. Impact. Wherever you wanted to watch wrestling, Cody Rhodes was, was there. <coughs> Can't ask for more. You know, Can't man. ask for more. But, man, I want to <laughs> definitely thank you for coming through. Um, Where can we find you during the week? New Year's same B at Mr. B1986 on X. Um, catch me there. The weekends, that crazy app called OK Live. When there's fights going on, I'm out there. We doing that streaming and humorous commentary, humorous, knowledgeable commentary. But yeah, man, that's where you catch me at. For Got sure. it. Got it. Oh, yeah, Wednesdays, man. I'm on here, YouTube and uh, Twitch for the B-sides, man. I sometimes, 4 p.m. Yes, 4 p.m., where I'm talking about the sports, the combat sports. Uh, last week events, if there's anything that happened last week, the upcoming events, share my thoughts on some topics there. Sometimes it's short. Sometimes it's extended. But you get what you need, man. Got it. Mr. B, want to thank you and want to thank everyone who was in the comments from Jay West, Tony D, Golf Hawk, the Sadie. General, Mike Patton, Sadie, and we are out.